Well, health care is the big story of the day, and Kathleen Sebelius is on the hot seat. Just, uh, well, just about 15 minutes ago, just ended. And this was a big hearing about the Obamacare rollout. Another hearing yesterday also got heated. Marilyn Tavener, the director of setting up the online exchanges, was the one getting grilled. But there was also a rather testy exchange between two lawmakers about the efforts to dismantle Obamacare. Take a listen. What are you going to do about the approximately 17 million children with pre-existing conditions who can no longer be denied health insurance coverage? Will the gentleman yield? Yes, I will. You ask a question, I'm going to answer it. There are, it's a false choice to say it's Obamacare or nothing. There are numerous proposals, including the one that I'm a co-sponsor of. I yield back. It, it I, deals let me take with back pre-existing time, conditions. You can sit there and say that you had a legitimate alternative after these years we've gone through 44 votes 48 votes now of you trying to dismantle this the, legislation you call that cooperation i don't were the gentleman you call that cooperation you're asking questions right. no, I'm so the gentleman's guilty. time has expired it's redundant no. Well, the congressman that stayed in his chair, Congressman Tim Griffin, joins us now. We also reached out to Congressman Bill Pascrell, who's been a friend of the show and has come on frequently. His office said he had a scheduling conflict today, so we look forward to talking to him. In the meantime, Congressman, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. What happened after that? Did you two have a chit-chat afterwards? We were wondering what was going to happen next. No, actually, uh, look, I, I don't think anyone on the committee... Uh, really considered those antics uh, to be serious. I think that was more for the camera, and apparently it worked. Uh, look, he was talking to the committee as a whole, and he was, uh, he was basically saying what a lot of Democrats want the American people to believe, and that is that there are only two options. Two options if you're going to deal with pre-existing conditions, for example. Either Obamacare as it's being implemented, or nothing at all. And that's just false. Well, Congressman, if there, I could, the, what, what, just to give our viewers a little bit more context, part of what Congressman Pascrell said is, listen, we've been through this before with the Medicare prescription plan that was rolled out by the Bush administration. That's something Democrats did not support widely. But once it was law, we all got behind it. And his message to the Republicans is, where are you? We also heard that today in this hearing. I just want to play a little sound from Congressman sure. Engel. He's a Democrat from New York. Here's <clears throat> what he had to say. I find it disconcerting that my Republican colleagues have done, not, done nothing but root for this law to fail for the last three and a half years, and now there's a big show here of being upset Great. at problems with the Great. website you move are keeping this? people from signing up co for coverage really? fast enough. So I would just say to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, you're really on the wrong side of history here. Congresswoman, we know, of course, that the health care law was passed with no Republican support at all, which makes it different from past laws. Do you think, though, should the fix to this law be, pi be bipartisan? Do you think that's part of what could be good for the country now? Well, I'd say a couple things. First of all, the website is just a symptom. Uh, eventually, I, I believe, uh, they will get the website fixed at some point. The problem with this law, it, it is a Washington knows best, one size fits all, top down deal that tells all of the states how they're going to do it. And what it ultimately is leading to is a, a, a single payer system. Uh, in fact, I, a doctor contacted me today and he said, you know, I'm not hearing it uh, out there, but that's what this is doing. And we're seeing this, we're pushing more people out of private insurance into the exchanges more people are going to be pushed on uh, to medicaid and look i would say to to uh, my colleague that you just played i would say look if you're for a single payer system yeah uh, you'll get behind obamacare and and you'll 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 be a cheerleader for it but a lot of us believe unlike the bipartisan uh, drug benefit that you re referenced earlier this law is fundamentally flawed and we have an obligation if that is in fact the, our beliefs and the beliefs of our constituents we have an obligation to continue to make the points that we're making and congressman the, the, we'd, lo we'd love to have you come back on too to tell us a little bit about the legislation that you have the bill we're short on time today but it's great to have you on the program and we're going to continue of course to follow this story very closely thank you